Good morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. Turn with me once again to Revelation chapter 10. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, wrapped in a cloud, with a rainbow over his head. And his face was like the sun, and his legs like pillars of fire. He had a little scroll open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea, and his left foot on the land. And he called out with a loud voice, like a lion roaring. When he called out, the seven thunders sounded. And when the seven thunders had sounded, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up what the seven thunders have said. Do not write it down. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives for ever and ever, who created heaven and what is in it, the earth and what is in it, and the sea and what is in it, that there would be no more delay. But that in the days of the trumpet called to be sounded by the seventh angel, the mystery of God would be fulfilled, just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice that I had heard from heaven spoke to me again, saying, Go, take the scroll that is open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. And I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. It was sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. And I was told, You must again prophesy about many peoples and nations and languages and kings. The angel says there's going to be no more delay. Time's up. The seventh trumpet is about to come. The mystery of God would be unveiled or fulfilled. So what's the mystery? Well, there's a few possibilities for sure, but overall it's at least the unfolding of God's plan. And see, in the Bible, a mystery is not necessarily something unknown, but something that one couldn't know unless or until it was revealed. It's called sometimes a sacred secret, a truth hidden to those outside, but revealed to God's people by His Word. Here's the thing. Life presents all kinds and sorts of mysteries, but ultimately, one day, they'll be revealed. The main one being, perhaps, in this context, why does God allow evil to continue? Why is the enemy allowed to continue? The time is coming. The seventh trumpet. Revelation 11, 14 to 19. And the beginning of the last half of the tribulation period will then begin with the outpouring of the wrath of God through the bold judgments. The angel tells John to take the scroll and eat it. It will be sweet and bitter, and so John does. He's given a message that he must prophesy about many people's nations, languages, and kings, and what is going on. Back in Ezekiel chapter 3, the prophet Ezekiel was also told to eat a scroll, and it filled him up. Here, John couldn't give further prophecies unless he was filled up. He could only proclaim that which he had taken in. And it was bitter and sweet, which is often how it goes when you're giving out God's word, when you're decrying and uh, telling about what's to come. Maybe it's judgment, maybe it's prophecy. Uh, any communication of God's word, really, there's a, a sweetness to it and a bitterness to it. Psalm 19, verse 9 to 10 says, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. There's a sweetness to the word for those that believe and a bitterness to the word for those who do not. John was able to be filled up so he could pour out. It's a great reminder for us today to not just treat God's word as, well, if I get to it, or I'll just dabble a little here and a little there, but to look at it as making it a part of us so that it can change us from the inside out. Till next time, on Little by Little.